In this lecture, we will apply our analytic constructs to an actual case of an organization undergoing reform. To do this, I will first recount the organizational elements presented in the last lecture, then I'll summarize the case, and finally, I'll identify the elements in the case and describe what sort of theory of organizing is implied by the author's account. The case that I'm going to talk about concerns Chicago Public Schools during uh, the time period of 1986 to 2001. It spans two different mayors, uh, Mayor Washington in the early period and then Mayor Daley in the later period. Um, as these two reforms occur, uh, there's shifts. So uh, I think you'll find it insightful in terms of applying the, the kind of theories we have so far to these uh, elaborations that other authors have made about the series of events that led to transformations or efforts at transforming uh, the Chicago Public Schools. The case materials that I'm drawing upon are the readings by Dorothy Ships and Anthony Brike, and they, they basically concern this entire period. Um, as you'll see, the two reform efforts have kind of a period of wax and wane where you have a shift in terms of, of how they, the, the coalitions or the groups or the organizations that evoke routines and at rational actors involved kind of arise in a certain beginning of that period and try to implement and then as they implement you see this kind of waning into a different era where all kinds of problems come up and lead to a shift. The basic changes that occur um, were an initial effort at anti-bureaucracy and forging managerialism or accountability. So you have these two phases um, and they're proposed as different means of solving the problem of low achieving schools uh, in Chicago. Uh, the case relates key stakeholders and groups, their interests and relations, and their responses. So both readings kind of elaborate features of this that allow us to kind of see at least with some depth how our different models or theories could be applied or help us understand what happened. Um, so it's a great case uh, by which to kind of try to apply our analytic constructs and theories. Let's begin with the first period where Mayor Washington was in charge. So here I made a, a quick table that goes through the, the key elements, organizational elements, and the two periods of wax and wane uh, that are uh, depicted in the case. So the first phase is kind of all about anti-bureaucracy, and the kind of goals that are talked about are killing red tape, decentralizing power, and empowering local experts, right? <clears throat> Later in this kind of phase of reform, there arise other problems like fiscal problems, right? And um, there's actually some kind of question as to whether those reforms of killing red tape and empowering local experts actually did anything. So they say the, the reason for the, the wane was people came to realize there was little evidence of success and little coordination and, and a fiscal crisis that precipitated an effort to do things more efficiently. Now the key actors in this early phase was there was a democratic legislature. Um, Mayor Washington was a key player, of course. And then the local school councils were uh, a key conduit through which uh, decentralization and empowerment of local experts could occur. There were also teacher union, of course, is a pretty powerful uh, group in Chicago. Uh, IBEC, which is the Illinois Business Education Committee, um, that was pretty prevalent and had been there for a long time. A committee of, of business uh, leaders who wanted to see the education system create workers that they could use in all the businesses of the area. And then there was a school board nominating committee, which I, I believe uh, uh, nominated principals and the like. Um, <clears throat> the social structure, so those were the key players. The social structure uh, was kind of decentralized during this period, so the coalition occurred for, uh, for governance across parties and interests in the local level down at the wards and the like. Uh, it was a time period of, of uh, um, um, decentralization in Chicago. The technology or the tasks that were being applied to accomplish this was really a governance or an organizational reform, right? Um, 
the, were local school councils and they decentralized cash usage to those councils, right? And um, the legislation and standard operating procedures were things that were kind of evoked during that period. Um, finally, the environment in this period was one where Mayor Washington is an African American uh, empowered uh, African Americans in the community and there was grassroots involvement in schools. It was considered to be somewhat of a renaissance for Chicago in, in these, these regards. In the second period we have Mayor Daley and Mayor Daley uh, was uh, in charge during 1994 to 2001 period that, that this, these texts talk about. And the general form that was presented after this fiscal crisis and a concern of all these problems of inefficiency and no evidence of improved achievement, uh, that there was a push for accountability and centralization. Um, you know, they didn't want to just socially promote students uh, to make them feel good. Uh, they wanted evidence. And so this effort to create a new phase of reform was geared toward managerialism or centralization where um, business leaders and experts of, of how to run uh, organizations came in and, and tried to guide the, the public school system in a different direction. Now toward the end of this period, of course, uh, you know, the reform itself came into problems too and the basic reaction was on the, the ground floor that there was a draconian effect of the implementation and teachers and schools were adapting to these new regulations in a way that kind of countered the spirit of the goals of, of uh, no social promotion and testing uh, by cheating and whatnot. Now the key actors in this phase had shifted. They were no longer a Democratic legislature. It was now a Republican one. And the mayor now was Mayor Daley, which is a former legacy of his father, who was also a, a mayor. Uh, there was now a, a CEO. They had centralized school authority under uh, Vallis. And uh, uh, Rico was a school board president. And Ibeck was still there. And the teacher union leaders were still there. So you had some of the players had changed in terms of who had access to power and clout. Uh, and it's partly because the legislature uh, decided to give uh, authority in, to Daly, and Daly assigned a CEO to run the district. And so it was a much more centralized structure away from the local school councils. And uh, this led to certain players being more uh, important than before. Um, so, of course, the people that are out, uh, local school councils out, teacher union somewhat out, uh, the school board nominating committee as well. Um, they had less authority, they were circumvented. Now, the social structure, like I said, was kind of centralized power. So, you had a coalition of loyal, loyalists to this cause that pushed others out. Um, and the same structure of teaching was used, but now you had uh, where, where teachers did the work and educators were implementing this. But now they kind of uh, took over the administration with business individuals, with business training. Um, and the argument was that this kind of managerialism that could be brought into an education system would improve it. So the technology here, the task which altered this uh, governance structure, was kind of legislation and appointments. So the, the state legislature had control over budgets and gave that budgetary power to the mayor um, and asked, made him accountable uh, with appointments and what, whatnot. So it was a centralized structure that was imposed uh, to develop this kind of uh, effect on the system. So what occurred was high stakes tests, regulatory factors like probation for students that didn't achieve. Uh, they had to go to summer school if they didn't achieve at a certain level. Um, scores went up, of course, um, but uh, tests, uh, of course, um, also were kind of coupled more to instruction as well. So teachers started to teach the test, and so there were certain kinds of reactions. So this is considered to be kind of recoupling of, of uh, educational institutions with the leadership uh, efforts that they kind of drive down into the technological core of teaching or, or instruction. Um, now, of course, at the later period of the reform, the teachers adapt to this regulatory factors, and they start to subvert the reform goals uh, for, to preserve themselves and their careers and their jobs. 
um, and, and even student self-esteem and whatnot. And so you see teachers cheating on these tests. You see uh, students that repeatedly take the test score, of course, get better. Um, and so there's all kinds of issues as to whether the uh, the system adapted to the reform so that it could demonstrate success even though it's kind of uh, surface level or not possibly even true. So finally the environmental elements we could look at as um, in the past you, you had kind of prior reform that failed so here's a, an effort to kind of correct that um, and pressing problems of, of uh, fiscal uh, issues, right? So politicians enter to deal with this crisis and the legislature makes laws and shifts power to the mayor. And of course business enters because the mayor picks external staff and they're loyal to him and he imposes this kind of administrative unit on the system. Over time though, in the later phase, the waning of this reform, uh, the environment kind of confounds things. The, the mayor's coalition makes information non-transparent to the environment, right? So uh, they claim successes even though there's all kinds of other evidence to the contrary. Uh, they manipulate the press uh, in terms of kind of reporting good news but hiding the bad. Uh, and this kind of decoupling, uh, managing the environment to survive even when it wasn't true in some cases, uh, to subvert reform goals for political success so they could be reelected and so uh, so on. So you make information cloudy in some cases and then uh, hide it in others that aren't very beneficial. So we have this kind of uh, interesting account of uh, the waxing of a reform in two periods and this waning in two periods and uh, shifts in leaders and, and what have you, right? So the, the general change though, if, if we think about it, is really a shift here. I mean, this is a schematic of a decentralized structure on the left, or I, on my right, whichever, it's the one with uh, the little stars in it. And then a centralized structure, which is kind of one that's focused on a particular individual and they everybody reports to them. And it's a typical phenomenon in a lot of reform efforts uh, in organizations that when there's crises or problems, there's an effort to centralize efforts. And when there's an effort to uh, uh, co-opt uh, groups on the shop floor, or the ground floor, in the, in the society and community, or in the environment, you decentralize them uh, to build up kind of buy-in. So these two different efforts uh, really reveal different kinds of managerial strategies and um, efforts to accomplish reform. Now, of course, if we combine all these phases into one table, uh, it's useful to someone like me and possibly to many of you, but it's a pretty dense table. Um, but you see all the, the features of uh, the kind of narrative and the actors, the goals, the social structure, technology, and environment. And it's kind of useful to see it all lined up as an analyst.